When Michael Jackson died this past summer, he had nearly a half a billion dollars in debts. But since then, it's been a great year for his career. Lawyers for his estate say they've lined up merchandising deals worth $100 million, and surging record sales and other income are likely to produce another $100 million. And it's not that unusual. Decades after their demise, some departed stars continue to work on new projects and draw more income than they ever made while they were drawing breath. And there is a growing legion of agents and managers willing to represent them. Dead celebrities can be just as lucrative as many live ones, and in some cases, a lot less trouble. I was known for going up and down Hollywood Boulevard. No other agent in the world represents more famous people than Mark Rossler. Errol Flynn, of course Robin Hood, Natalie Wood. Stroll down Hollywood Boulevard and he'll point out 62 of his clients who are immortalized with their own stars on the Walk of Fame. Gloria Swanson, Marilyn Monroe. His client lists include some of the biggest names of the 20th century. Actresses like Ingrid Bergman and Betty Davis. Baseball legends Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig. Singers Ella Fitzgerald and Billie Holiday, who all have one thing in common besides their greatness. We're a business agent for about 250 entertainment, sports, music, and historical clients, but most of those are deceased. Dead. Dead. They're working stiffs. I, I guess you could say that. You could call Rossler's business a William Morris agency for the departed, the CAA of the DOA. It's called CMG, and it's headquartered far from the glitter of Hollywood in an office park on the fringes of Indianapolis, distinguished only for the orange windsock for Rossler's helipad and his green Bentley. Inside is a multi-tiered office lined with memorabilia from his departed clients. First stop, a suit worn by one of the Blues Brothers. I represented the family of uh, John Belushi, his widow, Judy, for um, almost 20 years. It is all tastefully done and quiet as a morgue, a shrine of sorts for legend whose time on earth has ended, but whose career still has a pulse strong enough to produce a stream of revenue. It is part of their legacy now and maybe the ultimate show business compliment. They may be dead, but they still have an agent who's finding them work. What do you do for them? Well, it's really not that much different than if they were alive. You can't book them for personal appearances. That, that's correct. We can't talk to them. We can't get their approval, but we'll, we'll get somebody's approval. His real clients are the heirs and estates of the dearly departed, who ultimately approve or reject the merchandising deals that CMG puts together. This is our basement, where we have kind of the archives of the past uh, 27 years of the company, uh, a lot of the different uh, samples. They range from low-end tchotchkes, trash cans to handbags, to, to the mid-range items like Marilyn Merlot, Rated as one of the best California Merlots year after year. To the playfully purient outfits inspired by the late pinup queen, Betty Page. They're marketed as Halloween costumes, but Rossler says they seem to sell all year round. Uh, this is the devil costume. The whip included? The whip is included, yes. And, and the tail and, and the horns. <laughs> and the horns. The product endorsements run the gamut from paraphernalia to the pinnacle of post-mortem prestige, and Rossler has licensed more than 200 deals with the U.S. Postal Service. Here's a uh, boxer, Jack Dempsey, uh, of course Jesse Owens, uh, one of the early stamps with Babe Ruth, uh, of course uh, Jackie Robinson, a bit part of the baseball series, a very successful uh, stamp with uh, Malcolm X. So these are all clients? Yes, these are all clients. The agency has created websites for all its deceased clients and maintains and revives their fan clubs. We get at least 15 million hits a day that come through this, uh, this building for the different clients that we represent. It is all part of a legal and entertainment niche that Rossler pioneered more than 25 years ago after graduating from law school. Where did that idea come from? I really thought it would be nice to be an agent, but I really couldn't, being from Indiana, I really couldn't represent anybody famous because everybody living would have already been represented. So really the only opportunity was to represent deceased people. And I happened to notice that deceased personalities didn't have really any protection. Until Rossler came along in the early 80s, a celebrity's right to control or profit from their good name was buried along with them. The heirs had virtually no say in how their loved one's image or persona was used, and no claim to any of the monies they generated. 
So Rossler set about trying to change that in courts and in state legislatures around the country. Your first client. Helping to establish what is now recognized as the post-mortem right to publicity. The right to publicity, I don't remember reading that in the Bill of Rights. Where does that come from? We have the right to prevent our name, our likeness, our image, our signature, our voice from being used in some commercial fashion. Now, in a number of states, that right passes on to the heirs, just like a house or a bag of old coins. And one of the first beneficiaries lived right down the road from Rossler in Fairmount, Indiana. Marcus Winslow is the cousin of James Dean, who died in a car accident in 1955 after making just three movies. That's the set. But the image of this rebel without a cause has become a commercial icon. And 50 years after he crashed his Porsche, James Dean is still selling German cars and Italian shoes. But when Rossler first showed up at the family farm in 1982, Dean's heirs had no idea how big their Jimmy had become. Until Mark showed up, the estate had gotten no money at all from, That's from right. James Dean. Uh, I don't think he would approve of uh, perfect strangers of making money off of his name and his likeness if his family didn't have something to say about it. And so he's made a lot more money oh, yes. since he died oh, yes. than no, he did while he was oh, alive. No, no question. Oh, yes. He'd be an old man. Yeah, he'd be uh, 77 years old, but... Uh, He'll never be any older than 24. The image is frozen in time now, and the success of Dean's post-career career has helped turn the marketing of dead celebrities into an $800 million a year industry. And advances in technology are creating more and more opportunities for the deceased. Personal appearances are still out of the question, but nearly anything else is becoming possible. All it takes is a virtual set like this one at CBS Television City in Hollywood and some computer-generated imagery, and you can revive long-dormant careers. Hello? Why don't you take one of your big hits and do it over for Ricky? Tailor it for him. It happened one noche? I'm afraid... Well, it was just a thought. The Ricardos of Wimpole Street? Sorry, Lucy. The heirs of Fred Astaire were able to relaunch his career selling electric brooms during halftime at a Super Bowl. If I can dream of a better land. And Elvis was able to sing a duet with Celine Dion on American Idol. Tell me why, oh why. Elvis, many think, is the perfect business model for the Michael Jackson estate. Elvis is the all-time king of afterlife income and still pulls in $50 million a year. But then Elvis is more than a dead celebrity. He is also a destination at $28 a head. Everybody ready to see Graceland? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Graceland and the rest of the Elvis realm is now controlled by billionaire entertainment entrepreneur Robert Sillerman. And this modest, by today's standards, home is the second most visited private residence in the United States. It's seen by 600,000 people a year. Silliman doesn't just represent Elvis, he owns Elvis. Four years ago, he spent $100 million to buy 85% of the rights to the Presley estate. Turned out to be a wonderful deal for us and for the family. With everyone now getting their 15 minutes of fame on cable television and the web, Silliman doesn't believe there will ever be another phenomenon quite like Elvis, who has turned out to be relatively recession-proof. Some parts of his business are actually up. Why do you think they're up? Um, well, I would love to say that it's because of our brilliant management. Um, not you even, just did. Um, <laughs> I said I would love to say it. I didn't say it was true. But the fact is, is that you can't manufacture the affection and the appeal of, that uh, Elvis has. He's dead. Are you sure? If he's not dead, a lot of people have wasted money on flowers. Then there's the more than 5,000 Elvis-related products and all those impersonators. In 2002, the BBC did a report on occupations in the United States. And they said that according to the IRS, that over 84,000 people said that being an Elvis tribute artist, then called an Elvis impersonator, was their principal occupation. Sillerman is not the only billionaire in the dead celebrity business. The photo archive Corbus, owned by Bill Gates, has branched out from photo and film rights 
to representing the deceased people who appear in them. The agency called Greenlight was run until recently by Martin Cribbs. Its eclectic clientele includes the Wright brothers, opera star Maria Callas, and Steve McQueen, who has had a couple of breakout years selling Mustangs and watches. And what is the brand? What does the image say? I think that the image of Steve McQueen is really the anti-metrosexual. It's being uh, sort of sophisticated and masculine without affectation. It's not clear whether the macho man would be happy modeling clothes for Dolce and Gabbana, but that decision now rests with his family. Do you have a name for your deceased clients? <laughs> Delebs. Delebs? Delebs, yes. As in dead celebrity? Correct. Who's your biggest Deleb? Albert Einstein. He's our, he's our number one man. Bigger than Marilyn Monroe and James Dean. Huge, huge. The biggest in the world. Albert Einstein was Time Magazine's person of the century. Every 12-year-old in the world recognizes his picture and instantly equates it with genius. And Einstein's beneficiary, the Hebrew University of Jerusalem, has earned millions and millions of dollars from baby Einstein videos and Nike commercials featuring Kobe Bryant executing a genius move as the late Princeton professor. The last time we saw Martin Cribbs, he was working up a campaign to resurrect the mildly scandalous career of Hollywood siren Mae West for a pitch to stationers and perfumers. Unlike agents for the living, he was at peace knowing that he didn't have to worry about her next movie bombing, or his client getting sent off to rehab, or the headaches of having to deal personally with the notorious diva Maria Callas. Are there advantages to representing people who are dead? Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> if you are a cosmetics company and you've invested a million dollars in, in uh, Maria Callas, I can guarantee you there's not going to be any wardrobe malfunctions or, or embarrassing photographs getting out of uh, a limousine in front of La Scala without any underwear on. So that's, that's a huge advantage.